Well, the soil is absolutely key. About 97% of our food comes from soil. And if that soil is not being properly looked after, and particularly the microbes and getting enough carbon into that soil, uh, then the soil will collapse. The most valuable asset on your property is soil. Our soil is the key to our long-term viability as a nation. I think regenerative farming all comes down to soil health. I really believe that agriculture could be the solution to all the issues that are going on around the world at the moment. We must urgently rehydrate landscapes. We must rebuild the hydrological cycle for own water security, food security, stable biosystems, but most importantly, a stable climate. And what we want to do now is get our farmers taught how to best manage just the soil, how to link in with the water, how to link in with the plants, and if they're graziers, uh, the animals. And that's what we're trying to do through our Soils for Life program. We're right on the edge of the Liverpool Plains. Um, we're about an hour and a half southwest of Tamworth. I grew up in Sydney. I went to an ag college. We have 4,000 acres here, which is Rossay, which we bought three years ago, and Springfield, which we bought last year. It was incredible. It was spring 16, and there was so much grass. When we first started, I wanted to breed cattle. We're now in our third year of drought. You know, it's been a tough few years. I wouldn't have had it any other way. We started breeders and we've now had to cull our breeders. Currently, right now, we're again completely destocked. It always just intrigued me about, I guess, thinking outside the square and, and alternative ideas. And I worked on properties that weren't necessarily regenerative. It's everything how we run our farm. Regenerative agriculture, I guess it starts with the soil and it's all about soil health. That's really what I'm most passionate about. When we do get the falls of rain that we do, which we thankfully got 30 mils last night, we can actually see growth by having healthy soils and having carbon in our soils. We can hold more water. Instead of the rain hitting and running off, it will actually absorb the water. We can utilise it better so we can grow more, we have more water there. By having ground cover, I could grow enough grass and I traded skinny cows for to, to fatten them for eight months this year and so that's been fabulous to have profitable trades and a bit of income in a dry period. I've done some uh, multi-species forage crops, I've started fencing off our creeks and letting the trees come back. We had Peter and Stuart Andrews here, we ran a school here earlier this year. We built some level contours to then have spillways to then drain back over our paddocks to rehydrate the soil. With our cattle as well, we're rotationally grazing. I guess lots of things that we've sort of incorporated into the farm to basically, number one, look after the soil. People just need to be willing to seek, you know, more education and, and look into things and, and think outside the square. We're very lucky to have an organisation that is willing to put out these case studies for people to learn from. It's, a, it's free to go onto their website and, and look at people's case studies and and to actually see other farmers that are achieving really fantastic results. No matter, you know, whether we're conventional or we're regenerative, we all have a love for the land and we're all trying to do the right thing by it. My name is Brian Ward. I've got a small property, 160 hectares, which is about 28, 30 k's from Albury. And I was born and bred on the land and uh, been involved with it all the way through. When we uh, found this block, uh, there was nothing on it, it was just bare land. Regenerative farming really wasn't on the, on the radar anywhere. It was, to me, it was just sort of common sense. People think trees take a long time to go. Well, they don't, it's very quick. Well, I just here in 26 years, what's happened is quite incredible. Well, we've done 40 hectares out of the 160 hectares now in the understory. Come on! Come on, come on. Ah, ah, ah. So with this scheme, you find on really cold, windy days, they're either behind the trees or lying down because they're warm and so you can get better weight gains, better utilisation of your feed. We've had a few awards with the excellent eating quality over the years 
and we've got another one this year. Some of the hill country, which used to be just bare and full of Patterson's Curse now, it's got really good perennials right up to the top. All that uh, pretty exciting to see it, you know, transformed in its carrying capacity. Now I'm amazed how much feed we've got and how much feed we're still producing, even in this drier time. Your soil, when you, when you dig down in there, is there's still moisture there, which is quite amazing under these conditions. You can't do anything without soil. And people talk about their uh, $30,000 ram they bought or their $110,000 bull. But that's nonsense. That's the most precious possession and most valuable possession on the property is your soil. And Soils for Life, I think they're doing a, a great job, but it's not hard, it's not rocket science, it's just a case of uh, mindset. You know, forget the tradition and have another look at a, a different way you can do it. When, when you've got all these little copters, as I call them, these little plantations, it's so exciting because, you know, it just completely relaxes you and changes your whole thing, and it just gives you so much pleasure. So our farm began uh, with my family in 1906. Merino sheep, prime uh, beef cattle, uh, cropping, but uh, all dry land. Lived here all my life, married to a farming girl as well, so. Well, we ran a, a standard practice farm. We started to question it because of the need for more inputs to get the same yield. When we did all the soil tests, what we were really doing was unknowingly mining our natural resource. From then on, it was a real learning curve, doing a lot more study on what can really change our soil type. I think the big thing is that you try to get a mindset of whatever I'm doing to my, my country, what am I impacting in its soil health? Because if you keep taking off, you will deplete it drastically. So ground cover, understand your stocking regime so you move stock and keep cover, rest your paddocks in your pasture country, your cropping paddocks, understand that retain stubbles, keep things back in the soil, don't just bare earth it all the time, grow legumes in amongst your cereals or your canola so that you've actually got a regeneration system happening in the soil. The farm still runs as a commercial farm and we need to make a profit. We're actually digging into paddocks and it's soft. We're able to push a shovel in when we've had virtually no rain. So when you have a soft, tilthy soil with oxygen in it, the roots can go down, they can penetrate down to where moisture is, nutrients are. Look, the humus compost is, it's a very scientific 10 weeks and it's purpose built as a fertiliser. Look, we only put half a tonne to the hectare. It's such a tiny little amount, but it is like an activator. It gets the soils living and, and it reactivates the microbiology in the soil. So then you take the humus compost and you put it in the tea extraction unit and you actually make it as a liquid form. You've got two of your major tools there. And when you build organic matter, then you get to hold more water. So for every 1% of organic matter, we hold every rain event 160,000 litres of water. So they're telling us to build dams, however this is our dam, this is where we need to hold the water. Soils for Life gives us a great cross-section of, of management practices across our, our Australian landscape and it gives people an understanding that it does not matter what production system you're in, on, in agriculture, you still can make the soil a better place and make the whole dynamic of the system work for you. There are ways and there's enough knowledge now and enough science now that we can bring our soils back. I think our soil's the basis of all our food production and uh, if we don't have a quality soil system, we don't have a quality food system. It really stems to, to the farmer to create the soil, to create the food, to create the health. We have to change our whole approach to land management through this rehydration strategy and hear from Source for Life and from these innovators. We have practical proven case study examples. Yes, we can do it. Yes, we must.
I think uh, regenerative agriculture, that is getting our landscapes back into good order, I think is now unstoppable. Part of it's driven by climate change, but I think a lot of people are now realising that our farmers have got to be better supported to get their landscapes into good order. I think the 18th of July was probably one of the happiest days I've had in the whole of my life because the Prime Minister stood up in front of the nation and said, as a nation, the policy of this government is going to be to help restore the health of the Australian agricultural landscape. And we're going to do it by helping our farmers achieve it. I agree with Major General Michael Jeffrey. Australian farmers can improve their profitability and the resilience of their farming systems, even in the face of more frequent and extreme droughts. The government will support his recommendation to adopt as a national objective to restore and maintain the health of the Australian agricultural landscape to guarantee a food secure nation and sustainable farming communities. The public, if they understand that there's 100,000 farmers looking after 60% of the continent on behalf of all of us, then all of us as citizens have got to be able to support those farmers accordingly. My private uh, driver is the fact that we've got 10 grandchildren and from my perspective after a lot of study I believe the world is going to be in big trouble in providing enough clean water and enough food to feed what's going to be 10 billion people by 2050. So I just want to make sure that our kids when they grow up are going to have uh, this country at least with uh, suitable soil water uh, and land about to produce food adequate to feed uh, our country and maybe uh, help feed some other people as well.